Hey there, Sharon Hornells from here. Welcome to day 1,512. No one in their right mind would do half the things that I've done in my life. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times. This is one of those idioms that if I had a nickel for every time someone said something like, you're crazy, you're insane, you're nuts, that's impossible, you can't do that, uh, I would have, you know, uh, a fortune just in nickels. No, that nickels are worth a lot, apparently. So no one in your their right mind, no one in your right mind, no one in, in uh, no one sane would do certain things. According to who? Who says this, right? People that are judging us say nobody in their right mind would do this because they're saying basically what you're doing is crazy impossible or you can't do it. But what they're really saying is what you're saying that you want to do is crazy and impossible for me to do. Not for you to do, but for me to do. And I've learned that over years of proving people wrong when they tell me I can't do something or it's impossible or uh, it's it's a, it's a dumb or stupid or crazy thing to do, right? Uh, people are always quick to give us advice, yet often the people that we're getting advice from or that are sharing their advice are people that have never done the thing that it is that we're trying to do, we're trying to accomplish. Uh, so I always remind myself, consider the source, take advice with a grain of salt, just like when you read a book or, or read an article or see a, a, a story or hear a story or uh, hear the news or something online or something on television. Always consider the source and realize it's just one source of information. And a lot of times when we're exploring something, especially when somebody tells us something is impossible to do, we want to get a whole bunch of other sources. My first question is, if somebody tells me something is impossible or I can't do it or it's a stupid idea, is to search out other sides, other possibilities, other opinions, right? Or a, a wide variety of sources and references and opinions on the topic. Because I don't want just one other person's opinion. I'm definitely not going to adopt that as my belief, my opinion, of a topic or a situation. I've done that whenever we're exploring different uh, processes or procedures or businesses to get involved in or properties we're analyzing or uh, deciding if we're going to be strategic partners with somebody or if somebody's going to be a member of our board or a member of our team. We ask different questions. We don't just get one reference and ask for one person's opinion of that person. We want to see a variety of, of input on that person because none of us is one dimensional. There are very few, if any, I don't know if I've ever met, I've met some shallow people in my life, but I don't know that I've ever, ever met a one dimensional person. I think as human beings, we are so complicated and so dimensional that uh, it's hard to think that we're, and we're always changing. It's hard to believe that just because something wasn't possible for me five years ago, definitely doesn't mean it's not possible for me now. We can create and do anything we want if we give ourselves the belief and the opportunity and we take action to create that in our lives. So I love it when people tell me that uh, I'm not in my right mind about something because that means I just need to dig deeper and get more information and figure out how I'm going to make that thing happen because that to me is just a challenge and I am like the challenge queen. I love challenges. I love it when people say, oh, you can't do that. My dad taught me when I was a little girl that there's no such thing as can't. You know, maybe I am not going to be a professional basketball player at 5, 1, and 62 years old. But if I wanted to play basketball, I guarantee I could find a way to play basketball, right? Or anything else that we want. Doesn't mean I'm going to be a professional, but I could still enjoy that experience if I so choose. So, interesting. <clears throat> so that was our, our Super Size Your Business idiom for today was no one in their right mind would blank or... Uh, one in their, and I, I put the no in parentheses and said, well, one in their right mind would supersize and grow their business, right? I mean, if you believe that you could and you wouldn't fail, everyone would want to grow and supersize and have a positive impact and make the world a better place, right? And create everything that they'd ever imagined and wanted for their family. It's just a matter of believing that it's possible for you. And what's right for you is probably not right for me. I love that we all have different definitions of beauty and success and work and uh, struggle and love and happiness and joy and uh, 
challenges, right? I love that we all get to define those things for ourselves. So we get to decide. To me, challenge is a, is a positive thing and a great term. Probably wasn't always when I was younger. I didn't want to be challenged. But now that I'm older, I understand that every time I'm challenged to figure something out, I figure it out. And that moves me forward in the direction I want my life to go. So, right. No one in their right mind. I, I love that expression. I've heard it so many times. I've lost count right? <laughs> totally lost count. But it's helped to drive me to accomplish things that I probably never would have even imagined possible for myself if someone hadn't challenged me to say, ah, you can't do that. I'm like, mm, okay, said I can't. Let me, let me see if I can make that happen. And inevitably, I figure out a way and I make it happen. And uh, we all have that ability. We all can. But we get to decide what is right, what feels right for me are the things I'm attracted to, the things I'm going to do. What isn't right for me are the things that make me feel icky, the things that I that upset me or make me feel negative in any way, shape, or form. It's why I don't watch the media. It's why I don't participate in, in all the politics and religion and crazy discussions that people are having sometimes because they don't feel right to me. They don't feel good to me. I know that it's creating more negative energy in the world, and that's the last thing we need right now. So that was our idiom for supersize your business. Our annual challenge today, we got to day 90. Today was day 90, which is a milestone. Every 90 days that we do something is a huge positive impact on us. So if you were to quit today, and I'm not encouraging anybody to quit today, I, I want us to celebrate that we've made it 90 days. Think back to January 1st and what you thought about where you were and how you felt then versus Tomorrow, April 1st, when we're hitting day 91 and we're moving from our mental well-being area and aspect of our life into our spiritual area and aspect of our life. And this is a really, uh, it's a challenging area to discuss with people because it's one of those areas where we believe our beliefs are often right and the only right beliefs to have. I was raised Catholic and my mom is a probably one of the most devout Catholics I know. And following my sudden cardiac arrest, and probably a little sooner. I chose not to be Catholic anymore. And it's not that I'm not Catholic. I mean, once you're a confirmed Catholic, you're always Catholic. But I chose not to focus on religious, spiritual beliefs anymore. And I am very spiritual, but I am not religious. I say that nowadays, and it drives my mom crazy. Because, of course, she thinks that her religion is the right religion. And I love her for that. I love her for her faith and her sense of faith. It's gotten her through so many things in life. I mean, uh, one thing about life, and she just turned 85 last week. One thing about our lives is it gives us challenges. It, it shows us sometimes things we don't want to see and sometimes things we want to see. But uh, all of it forms who we are and the person that we show up in the world. And she is one of the most kind, loving, amazing women I've ever met. Uh, so we're going to go into spiritual. My whole point about that was, is I love her no matter what she believes. And I'm hoping, and I believe she loves me no matter what I believe, right? <clears throat> it doesn't matter what we believe as long as it's right for us and doesn't hurt other people. I always say you can believe whatever you want as long as it doesn't hurt or harm other people, right? Uh, and that is my belief. That's my spiritual belief. I believe we put positive energy into the world, we get positive back. We put negative energy into the world, we get negative energy back. And it doesn't mean I don't ever put negative energy in the world. I say things sometimes that upset people. Uh, I don't say it to upset people, but a lot of times it has that effect, right? I hold myself accountable and I make mistakes just like every other human, but I also hold the people that I interact with and I work with and that are part of my life accountable. And sometimes people don't want to be held accountable. Sometimes people want to live in their excuses and live in their reasons versus doing what they've committed to doing. And it's my job and my role, I believe, to hold people accountable to what they say they're going to do and, and help them become better human beings, just like I'm always continually improving and working toward becoming a better human being. That's my experience here on the planet is to be the best human being I can possibly be. So... Tomorrow we'll move into spiritual. It's going to be a tough topic and I would be fibbing if I said I'm 100% comfortable about it, but I will get comfortable with it and we'll talk about it for the 30 days of April. And I don't even know what's after that. Let me see what's after that. I got my calendar right here. 
April is spiritual. <clears throat> May is financial. Yeah, we got to get to financial. We probably should have done that first, but I hate starting the year off with financial because that's what everybody's brains are already on. Uh, not everybody's, but a lot of people's. And then June will do relationships. July, contribution. What are we here to, to show up as in the world? August, confidence. And... September communication and then October, November, and December will be a surprise for you and me, right? So let's go back to April so we can get ready for that. Uh, any questions? Any way I can help you? Uh, still working on this cold I, on week two, so it should be winding down. Uh, and that's freed up my schedule because I cancel a lot of things. When I don't feel good and I don't feel my best, I don't want to be trying to help people. Now, if I have commitments that I have to stick to and I, I'm still following through on those, but it's freed up some time in my schedule. So I like to say when I have time in my schedule, if you've got a problem or a challenge or you're stuck on something and you don't know what to do, hit me up, direct message me, and I guarantee that in five minutes or less, we can get you moving forward on the next thing that you need to do. Not everything you need to do to create everything you want in your life, but the next thing you need to do to keep moving forward in your life. And that's part of what the annual challenge is all about. We just need to do one small thing every day to have a huge impact on our life, right? And if we automate some of the things like we're automating today, something from our mental well-being that'll move us automatically toward our goal, our end goal for the year, where we're adding something to every day for the rest of the year. And it doesn't mean that something's going to be the same thing for the rest of the year. It just means we're going to commit to adding something every day. So by October, we'll have added nine automatic things to our everyday actions to move us toward the goals in the, the nine areas and aspects of our life, right? Why? Because that guarantees that we are going to get a lot closer and make a lot more progress toward the goals that we've set for ourselves than if we didn't do something every single day. And guess what? If we eat that elephant one bite at a time, we can eat an elephant. If we solve a problem one little bit at a time, if we achieve a goal it, little, 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 little bits at a time, all of a sudden we're there. We've arrived at our destination and we didn't even realize how we got there. Well, we did. We did it intentionally, but it doesn't feel painful or like a struggle or hard. And that's the whole point is to transform our lives and make that part of our journey, part of our process so that it doesn't feel hard. So we can enjoy the journey. So we can enjoy becoming who it is that we're here to become. All right. Have an awesome day. And I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow.